and questions I have about federal court is, when am I going to get a bond? Like I said earlier, most times you don't get a bond if you've got especially drug charges or uh, uh, other types of offenses uh, that are either violent or whether you have a prior history or whether you're on bond in state court when you get arrested in federal court. So a lot of times you don't get a bond in federal court. Um, and uh, other questions I get about people being arrested in the federal system is how long is this going to take? Sometimes it can take a year, depending on the size of the case. Um, the federal government will tell you you have a right to a speedy trial, and then everything you do um, will slow down that process. If you file motions or pleadings, the courts consider that a, a, a uh, timeout, basically, to the Speedy Trial Act until those motions are decided. Although a motion is a request for the judge to do something on your behalf. If you file one, then the prosecutor usually files a response, and then they go. To, we go to court and we argue about it. Um, sometimes filing motions can be beneficial. I had a case just recently where my client believed that a federal agent went to a federal grand jury and misrepresented the facts to uh, the grand jury, and he was indicted on false or misleading statements. Uh, we filed a motion arguing those matters, and we also filed a motion saying that um, a federal agent either lost or destroyed evidence that would have helped us. That's a Brady motion. That's saying that, uh, uh, well, th there's a case called the United States versus Brady, and the courts say that any evidence that helps a defendant that is in the possession of the prosecutors should be given to the process, should be given to the defendant so that he can take advantage of that evidence. Well, in our particular case, we believe that they not only didn't give it to us, they may have destroyed it. And so we filed a motion to that effect. And before we had a hearing on that motion, the prosecutors came to us with a lot better offer. And my client decided to take that offer instead of litigating the case or going to trial. So sometimes motions can be a little bit helpful in our, uh, from our side in that the prosecutors don't want to go into that. They may make us a better offer. So there's a lot of aspects to federal prosecution, federal uh, uh, crimes, and, and that's just the first step. If you, if you go to trial, which you have an absolute right to go to trial, which means they would have to prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, in both state and federal court, the level is proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And if you lose, you have a right, an absolute right to appeal to the, to the United States um, Circuit Court for the Sixth Circuit here in Tennessee. If you appeal a federal case, you go to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is in Cincinnati. And you can ask them to review the case and see if, if uh, something happened at trial that was not right you may be able to get a, uh, a better outcome from the Court of Appeals. I had a particular case um, a while back where I was asked to look at what happened at trial, and uh, we looked at it, and an individual in Greenville, which is still part of the federal system here for the Eastern uh, District of Tennessee, um, was denied Brady material, again, the Brady issue, and he got convicted, and we appealed his conviction to the Court of Appeals, and the Court of Appeals agreed with us that the prosecutor violated his Brady rights and should have given him information that was help, would have been helpful to him at trial, and they didn't do that. And once we won that appeal, he came back to court, and they gave him a little sentence and let him go instead of putting him in jail, so that knocked off, you know, 10 years or more off his sentence. Um, so that's the federal set, the federal process.